beautiful, strong, happy, and healthy people. So this is a bit of a follow-up of my 14-day um, CGM challenge. I was wearing a continuous blood glucose monitor. The goal was to wear it for 14 days, test how my blood glucose responds to things like stress, with different foods, with uh, working out, all the lovely fun stuff to figure out what type of diet is best for me and why I should probably get out of my diet. But in the meantime, I was testing a couple of fun foods like Coca-Cola and things like that to see how high I can push it up. But at day seven, my blood glucose monitor got pulled out at training. So I didn't get to finish my whole 14 days. But in the meantime, in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys five awesome lessons I learned from wearing my blood glucose monitor, even if it was for just seven days. I did learn a bit and I am going to do this challenge again in a couple weeks. I did just order a new book, Rob Wolf's Why to Eat, and he talks a lot about blood glucose monitoring and testing and a bunch of other little things like factors you should kind of keep out for and how to read it better and what you're really looking for. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Then I'm gonna give it another go and then I'll keep you guys posted again. Now, as you can see, I haven't posted for a bit because my house is covered in boxes and I am moving next this weekend. This weekend, soon, couple days. So everything has been getting torn and ripped apart. So excuse the mess. Things I've learned from my seven days of wearing my CGM. Number one is how much your blood glucose really moves. I didn't realize how much movement I had in my blood. So that doesn't sound correct, but in my blood glucose. So my sister's a type 1 diabetic, as I said in other videos, and her blood glucose goes from anything from pretty much being in a coma to being where the machine says too high and too low. So she has a lot of movement, but I never realized how much the normal person has. So there's a couple times in my sleep, my blood glucose went to about a three, and also when I had a little bit of alcohol. I should have had it, if I had it on yesterday, I'm kind of hungover today. I really would have been able to test how this alcohol thing was going. And also when I've had the Coke, I went up to a 9.7, if I remember correctly. Although I was disappointed, I was really hoping for a 10. I've had, I've read online that a couple people went past a 10 just through stress and training. So I was hoping I'd get to a 10, but 9.7, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Number two is a weird one, and it happened a couple times, and this is where you can actually feel when your blood glucose actually starts to drop. Now, there was one time in particular when I was, after I had the juice on one of my tests, and I was on the computer working and all of a sudden I got this weird faint rushy feeling. Now during this time I was testing my blood glucose constantly because I wanted to really hit that peak and feel that and see where that drop came. I felt like this weird fainty feeling of like a strange rush but not in a good way. And everything went blurry and then came back too and I was like that's so odd. And then I tested my blood glucose and it actually dropped like three points within a matter of like a, less than a minute. So it was actually my blood glucose just dropping in that moment. Now another thing I realized is with my breakfast, the days that my blood glucose went up quite high with my nectarines or my banana and other foods, within sometimes an hour and a half to three hours, I was hungry straight away. Whereas the days where I maintained my blood glucose and just had the eggs and the veggies, so the high fat and the protein diet for breakfast, but protein food for breakfast, I found that I wasn't hungry and my blood glucose stayed steady. So when you do spike things up and when it does come back down and crash, expect to be quite hungry. Lesson number three I just touched on a couple of seconds ago, but it's the effect that alcohol has on your blood glucose. I had no idea I'll be able to drop down to like a 3.1 when I was drinking wine and whilst I was having the wine, I was also, I wasn't even that intoxicated, just a little bit tipsy. I was also having things like caramel condensed milk and um, some chocolate cake and a bunch of unhealthy food because I was trying to try and push, I was trying to push it up, but the alcohol was just pushing it down. So it would be very curious to try what the alcohol does on an empty stomach. But on top of that, the second day when I had the hangover, my sugar level stayed around that six to seven the whole day and I could not get it under. And even when I ate food, it went up so much quicker. So it wasn't just that your blood glucose dropped with alcohol. It's that the second day, they are, they're generally a lot higher. And I spoke to my sister about this and she said it's exactly the same for a diabetic that whenever she drinks, she has to be careful that the next day, she's gonna have a lot of highs. Number four is the effect that training and adrenaline has on your blood glucose. Now, I realized after just training, there was days I was getting up to about an eight, which was pretty much when I was having like a juice 
or a really high sugary piece of food or a lot of carbohydrates but my body was doing it naturally through the adrenaline of doing jujitsu now this is one reason why lately they've been saying that when you train you shouldn't actually have a post-workout straight away that whole post-workout window thing has generally been debunked but they say you should wait a couple hours until you eat something especially something with carbohydrates because your blood glucose is quite high and your body's running already on adrenaline you should wait for it to come back down so it levels back out and it's a little bit easier for you to maintain your blood glucose so you're not going to spike it again straight away with more food and number five is that food can be different on different days and different times of the day. Now I tested this with nectarines, whereas one morning I had it in the morning, it did nothing. Another day I had it a couple hours later, it did nothing. Another day I had it again for breakfast and it went crazy. And then I had it again in the afternoon and it went crazy again. And also if I had one or two, I'll, it was completely different at different times. So I really couldn't get a full idea of what foods were best for me. Now I know that in Rob's book, Why to Eat, he makes sure that you do your carb test first thing in the morning, similar times with don't, if you're gonna have coffee with it, always be consistent with what you're having with it so you can actually get a good picture of what is your body what's your body's effect with different foods so i was testing it at different times throughout the day and every time i had a different effect and then when i'll try let's say having the food with breakfast i'll do it again and then i'll have a different effect again just based on how tired it was or i could have something a little bit different with my food so there's a lot of inconsistency with my measurements so i wasn't too sure of what i was looking out for so i really think that world wolf has it correct where you got to do it just consistent every day so those are the five lessons i learned from wearing my cgm for about these seven days i think it got two before it got pulled out i realized i actually got quite addicted to scanning it it was pretty awesome having the real time ability to track to monitor what you're eating it was quite fun um it was a little bit weird on my arm a lot of people did ask if i was diabetic and i found it's been a week and a half since i've had it on and I'm noticing that when I get changed, I actually still take my shirt off in a way so that I'm worried I'm going to catch it. So it did really get, like, become a part of me really fast. So I can see why it's quite addictive. Now, they are quite expensive. I will put a link below of where to buy them if anyone's interested. But they're, they're kind of a good test to do um, a quarterly or every couple of times a year or once a year just to have an idea of how your body uh, reacts to different foods, but I will make that video after I read the Rob Wolf book about what you guys should really watch out for. So thanks guys for checking out my video really quick. I'm gonna get back to uh, packing and trying to move for this weekend, which is going to be delightful. Now, if you guys have ever worn a CGM and you're not a type 1 or type 2 diabetic and you've done it kind of for fun and for biohacking, then let me know what yours said about you or your health. If you're thinking about giving it a go and you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, keeping strong, happy and healthy. Oh.